This is what's great about the NBA this time of the season. No matter what happened last game, not too far from the next game. So we're coming off that opening season loss at home to the Mavericks. But sort of forget that one. It's time for the Houston Rockets. The Spurs doing the Texas two-step. Although you do want to move forward, still you got to learn from what the past was like. Victor Wimbayama has to watch those silly fouls so he can get into an offensive rhythm. The Spurs can't make crazy mistakes toward the end of the game like turnovers and bad shots. They got to get a lot of contributions for a lot of different guys like Devin Vassell at 23. The Rockets are coming off a loss. Houston lost Wednesday night in Orlando, 116 to 86. So here's a look at the matchup tonight. It's the Rockets and the Spurs. Somebody's going to be wanted one. Tip off is at 7 o'clock at the Frost Bank Center. Highlights for you coming up tonight on the Night Beat. Hey, the big game, big game coverage tonight. The Taft Raiders face the Jay Mustangs, District 29, 6A. The Raiders are 6-2 overall, 5-1 in district after starting the season 0-3. They have reeled off five straight and are looking for more. If the Raiders win, they'll face Harlan for a share of the 26-6-8 crown in two weeks. But they first have to beat the Mustangs tonight. John Jay, 7-1 overall this season, 5-1 in district, 29-6-A. And they are coming off their first loss of the season. They lost 42-33 to undefeated Harlan. Jay is playoff bound and looking to beat the Raiders who are 6-2. Once again, kickoff tonight is at 7.30 at Gus Stadium. And this weekend, full of college football action right here in town. It's UTSA hosting East Carolina. The Roadrunners looking to go 4-0 in their conference. East Carolina is winless in the conference. Jeff Trailer should be ready. Remember, he was hit with that mousetrap earlier this week. Tulane and SMU also 3-0 in the conference. So. A lot of big bundle up at the top. BYU coming to Austin to take on the Texas Longhorns. Tomorrow, Malik Murphy will be starting for Quinn Rewers, who got hurt. So that'll be interesting to see how he handles that. Then Texas A&M hosting South Carolina. That game is at 11 in the morning. Texas is at 2 in 2.30 in the afternoon. And then on Sunday, look, we got more action for you. The Texans and the Panthers. The Texans could actually get above 500. The Panthers 0-6. Texans are... Three and three. That kickoff is at noon. Also kicking off at noon, it's the Rams and the Cowboys. After Dallas had the bye week last week, they should be ready for the Rams. They don't want to look ahead because next week it's the Eagles. So they got to take care of the Rams tomorrow or Sunday afternoon. All right. If the Spurs tonight wasn't enough, how about the Globe Life Field in Arlington? Looking pretty sharp because they are ready to host the 2023 World Series. It's the Texas Rangers and the Arizona Diamondbacks, probably two teams not very many at going this far because they're both were wild card teams. And of course, there's MacArthur High School alum and former Texas Tech Josh Young. And this is a dream come true for him. I mean, yeah, growing up in Texas, this is pretty cool, pretty special. Um, that, that ALCS was pretty cool too. Um, I mean, it's always been a dream of mine to play in the World Series, uh, to potentially win a World Series. Um, to be doing it my rookie year, to have a chance to do it, is pretty crazy. Um, the dynamic of the team from last year to this year, just crazy. Um, don't really know how to put it all into words. Um, still kind of surreal. Still have those like, hey, pinch me kind of things. But, um, but we're here and we're ready to do it. All right, so they'll start doing it tonight, 7-0-3 in Arlington with game one against Arizona. He got a roof for the Rangers now because he's from San Antonio, MacArthur High grad. So, you know, yeah. like to see young kids from my, here. My well, family, though, in Houston uh -oh. isn't going to like this. Well, it's, it's over. They can, you know, they can root for the Rangers. It's a Texas team. It's a okay. Texas thing. Okay. You can root for Arizona, can you? No, but I got family there, too. <laughs> <laughs> the Dia de los Muertos Festival taking place over the next couple of days, and that means you're going to be seeing a lot of well-decorated altars, sir, altars. And while all of them are meant to honor loved ones, we're going to show you how a few also hope to raise awareness about an important issue. Gaza running out of fuel as the UN warns hospitals are on the brink of collapse. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Jerusalem, and I'll have all the latest coming up. Israeli forces now say that they have killed a top Hamas intelligence official who planned the attack from Gaza. But the Israelis, under pressure from the U.S., have stopped short of launching a full ground invasion into Gaza. ABC's Inez Delicatera reports this comes as attacks from both sides continue. 
Nearly three weeks after Hamas militants launched attacks on Israel, sirens still sounding. This morning, a rocket fired from Gaza hit a Tel Aviv apartment building, injuring at least four people. Meanwhile, Israel's defense forces launching limited incursions into Gaza. The IDF says an armored column of tanks and bulldozers supported by airstrikes conducted a series of targeted raids. There are about 300,000 troops amassed near the border, but a full-scale ground invasion has yet to begin. The U.S. has been urging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to exercise caution. We're not uh, dictating terms to them, but as you heard the president say the other day in the Rose Garden, certainly if we can take some time to get more hostages out, that's something that we all want to be looking at. And the fate of those nearly 230 hostages may have also stalled the invasion push. Family members taking to the streets to plead with the Israeli government to secure the return of their loved ones taken by Hamas. Only four hostages have been freed so far. Meantime, heavy shelling and airstrikes have leveled entire neighborhoods, and there are growing concerns about a fuel shortage in Gaza. Israel says Hamas has millions of liters of gas in reserve, but relief agencies are calling for Israel to allow more fuel convoys to enter the enclave. The current system in place is geared to fail. What is needed is meaningful and uninterrupted flow. According to the Hamas-run Ministry of Health, over 7,000 Palestinians have been killed since the war began. The U.N. has been unable to confirm those numbers, but overnight, Palestinian officials released a 165-page document, which they say shows the names, ages, and ID numbers of those killed. In Ezra Lequitera, ABC News, Jerusalem. The Pentagon says U.S. fighter jets launched airstrikes early this morning on two locations in eastern Syria that were linked to Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. The strikes come in retaliation for a slew of drone and missile attacks that were launched against U.S. bases and personnel in the region. And all that began early last week. The U.S. wants to hit Iranian-backed groups suspected of targeting the U.S. as strongly as possible to deter future aggression while also working to avoid provoking a wider conflict. Mexico's government now sending rescue teams to help clean up the billions of dollars left in damage by Hurricane Otis. The storm killed at least 27 people. Meanwhile, survivors of the Category 5 storm are getting desperate amid a slow government assistance response. People in Acapulco worry that the focus will remain on repairing tourism infrastructure instead of helping the neediest. The Mexican government already deployed around 10,000 troops to deal with the aftermath, but they need equipment to move tons of mud and fallen trees from the streets, and that equipment is slow to arrive. Here at home, take a look at this. There is some sun out there peeking out between the clouds. Going to be a pretty nice day out there, although, you know, Mia, this morning, the sun was out and it was raining on me. Well, you know, that's just Texas for you, right? And it's humid. We've been dealing with the humidity as well. That's something you'll definitely notice when you step outside. One of the reasons why we have some of the cloud cover in place as well. But yeah, I do think some peaks of sunshine will be possible here and there as we head into this afternoon. But we still do have some spotty downpours that we are going to have to contend with. So let's get you the latest here on your authority radar. What we will be monitoring as we head into even the evening plans some spotty downpours certainly possible there as well but for us here in san antonio we've got a few showers out there on the far east side you can see though just to the west of the san antonio area a few isolated showers near concan that's moving up highway 83 close to lakey even a few showers near utopia vanderpool as well as medina here we are closer to san antonio near shirts have a few heavier downpours tracking northward towards the i-35 corridor same still out in wilson county near lavernia as well as Sutherland Springs. We're monitoring some additional development there just to the south near Floresville and Poth, but those downpours are weakening as they approach Highway 181. A few more scattered showers, though, especially the farther east that you go near Hallettsville, Shiner, and Lavaca County, and then even over into far eastern DeWitt County. So it's not going to be for everybody today, but we'll monitor some hit or miss downpours throughout the remainder of the afternoon. Highs climbing into the 80s by 5 
5 p.m. around 84, and then we'll start to see those temperatures drop off into the 70s later on this evening. Looking ahead to your weekend, just isolated Saturday and Sunday, still mild with highs in the low to mid 80s, but then we see that next front move in and those temperatures quickly drop into Monday as we start to see those gusty north winds kick up as well. So we'll talk more in depth about that Halloween and also those rain chances that come with that cold front in just a few. Thank you, Mia. Altars are a mainstay of the Day of the Dead celebrations and each one holds a special meeting for those who create them. After the break, how the cycling community is hoping to honor lost lives in a very special way. The cycling community and families of cyclists hit and killed in crashes are remembering their loved ones in a very special way and also raising awareness about the problem. Sarah Costa shows us the altars that are being made in their honor for the Dia de los Muertos Festival this weekend. His way to work, he was run over by a careless driver. He was on his bike on his way to work. Fernando was 42 years old and had been a deputy with the Hayes County Sheriff's Office for 15 years. He loved to bike, but loved his family more, taking care of all of his siblings. He was like a father to me. He always made sure that we were taken care of. It's why for the past several years, Amaya puts an altar together for her older brother with special care to honor and remember him, but also to raise awareness for the many other cyclists who get killed each year in our area by drivers. She isn't alone. SATX Social Ride, a bike riding group that promotes safe social riding, has also made an altar for the many members of the community that have been killed while cycling. On average, we lose four or five people a year to cycling incidents in, in traffic. The organization partnered with Hill Country Ghost Bikes, a group that makes bike memorials at the sites of crashes to make one large altar for the dozens of community members killed while riding. Well, we have one person uh, who is six years old on up to, to 70 year old people. They hope these altars remember their loved ones, but also remind drivers to be vigilant for cyclists on the roads. It's very important that we put a human face uh, for the community to see who cyclists really are. Look out for the cyclists, look out for the people walking, just so that those people don't have to go through the what we're going through. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And Worthless Fest is taking place this weekend at Hemisphere. You can scan the QR code you see on your screen right now. It will take you directly to our website. And there you're going to find everything you need to know about Muertos Fest. And hopefully we don't see all that this weekend. Yeah, we also, by the way, if, if you don't go out to Worthless Fest, you can watch all those festivities anyway. We have a special broadcast on November 1st right here in KSET, and you can watch it online on KSET.com. There you go. And if you are planning on heading out tomorrow at least, here's the forecast. Temperatures climbing into the mid-80s by about 4 o'clock. Just an isolated chance to rain. About a 20% to maybe 30% potential at best, but it could be worse. So that is the good news. More of the same as we head into Sunday until we see that powerful cold front work its way into South Central Texas. We'll get you all the details on dropping temperatures into Halloween after the break. So we're hoping things calm down the weekend from Muertos Fest and then they'll pick up and then they'll calm down in time for Halloween trick or treating. Still going to be cold. Yeah. Still gonna be right. What would be a good Halloween outfit when it's cold? I'm trying to think. Maybe a mummy, because mummies have a lot of uh, layers or something. I'm just trying to think of something that like would yetis. be. Like yetis. You yeah. could be a yeti. You could. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, just something that you're definitely going to have layers for. If you are doing the ghost outfit, definitely have some layers on underneath. So yes, this all following the rain that we had yesterday. I do want to give you a little bit of a rainfall update. We've got some awesome KSAT Connect photos in of area rain gauges in and around the San Antonio area. This is actually just south of Lavernia. Lavernia, northern Wilson County saw some of the highest totals yesterday. Just under four inches right here in this rain gauge. This is up in New Braunfels near Highway 46, about three inches of rain and 
southern Bear County, just about three inches of rain as well. So thank you everybody who's helping us kind of look at some of the ground truth, what we actually were able to find fall out there throughout the day yesterday. Now this is the latest drought monitor that was released yesterday morning. Of course, all of the rain that we saw Thursday isn't included in this, but you can see we still have a lot of work to do whenever it does come to the existing prolonged drought. But what I want to overlay on here is now the updated rainfall total since the start of October. Yesterday we had 0.63 officially here in San Antonio over at the airport in the rain gauge. That brings our total for the month to 2.38. Check out Smiley over three inches, Seguin over four inches. That's great news. And as we zoom this in closer to Bear County, points just up to the north, 2.7 in Spring Branch, over three and a half up by 35 in New Braunfels, 3.28 out on the west side near the Alamo Ranch community. We're not finished with the rain chances. It is going to be spotty. It's not going to be for everybody today, but we've got about a 40% potential this afternoon and into the early evening. Just isolated though tomorrow and into Sunday, about a 20 to 30% potential. Sunday evening, Sunday night, we bump that up to a 70% chance as we see this cold front move in. Lingering scattered rain is expected Monday, tapering off by Tuesday morning. And I think by Tuesday evening, as you're stepping out for trick or treating, yes, it will be cold, it will be breezy, so you'll want to bundle up, but that rain should be coming to an end. So here's the setup scattered downpours across the area right now. Up to the north, there's that front already pushing into northern Texas. Scattered rain expected across the northern half of the state tomorrow and into early Sunday. We don't see this front move through our area until Sunday evening by to just after sunset, and then that will continue to push farther southward Sunday night. Again, Monday is 60% potential for some lingering scattered rain. Tuesday morning, just a 20 to 30% chance before all of that moves farther off to the south by Tuesday evening, which is good news for trick or treating. Morning low temperatures dropping significantly by Monday morning. We're in the 40s, feeling like the 30s thanks to the wind. So here's your early trick or treat forecast by Tuesday evening. Temperatures in the 40s, feeling even colder with the wind in place. Definitely plan on dressing warm. And again, the good news is those rain chances should start to come down by Tuesday evening as well. After that, we'll slowly start to work our way back into the 60s by Wednesday and Thursday. So yes, this weekend will be mild and it will be humid, but we've got those big changes just around the corner. Thank you so much. And here's an idea. You know, those weighted blankets, you can use that as you're in white for your ghost costume. Those are nice and warm. We're gonna talk at five o'clock, not just about weighted blankets for adults, but for babies. They're marketed as a cozy way to calm your baby and help them sleep faster and stay asleep longer. They seem like a godsend to exhausted parents, but before you buy one of these things, 12 of your size Marilyn Wards has a warning from the American Academy of Pediatrics. It's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. That's just a taste of what you'll get at this year's Festival de Puerto Rico. The event, which took a years-long hiatus because of COVID, is finally back in San Antonio. Our theme this time is called Palante, meaning onward. Do you like live bands and salsa music? Well, this is the place to be, says Olga Custodio, vice president of the Puerto Rican Heritage Society. You walk in and the music's blasting and you, you know, as a Latino, you start moving immediately. The all-female Latin pop band Son Divas from Puerto Rico is headlining the party. And speaking of parties, they're going to want to eat at this one. The food, amazing. We support our local restaurants here that provide a Puerto Rican cuisine, very Caribbean type. And then there's the art. Olga says organizers are flying in artisans from Puerto Rico to showcase their art. But the best part of the event may be the worthy cause it's supporting education. We take a percentage of our net uh, profits mm -hmm. and, and put it into scholarships. Last year we were able to give over $14,000 in scholarships. And the college students getting that money are from San Antonio. So do you have your dancing shoes ready? The Festival de Puerto Rico takes place October 29th from noon to 6 at the Shrine Auditorium. And I know they hear our music all the time. 
So it's their opportunity to come out, move their hips, learn a little bit more about salsa dancing, about eating our cuisine, and looking at our art, and just making new friends. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. A lot of parties going on towards the end of this month, and we always know that there's a party going on down here. Oh, yeah. Every day. The big How one, about, Halloween. How about a pizza party? Everybody <laughs> loves pizza. <laughs> yes, and San Antonio native and Grammy winner, Chris Perez, is here to tell you how he's teaming up with Pizza Patron. Yes, and we've got a new pizza with a, with a new name. Stay tuned to find out what it is coming up next. And a free party. Mm -hmm. And a free well. party for sure. Yes, indeed. All right, and then after pizza, a little dessert. Look at these from Cupcakes to Soro. Just in time for Dia de los Muertos. Oh, yes. And Jen is over at Hemisphere Park with another party. Mm -hmm. Preparations are underway here at Hemisphere Park for the 11th annual Dia de los Muertos at Hemisphere, popularly known as Muertos Fest. They are setting up altars now. We're going to give you guys a preview on what to expect at this year's event. All right, do you carve a pumpkin mm -hmm. or do you decorate a pumpkin? No. The ultimate question. <laughs> uh, yes. So we are going to both carve and decorate pumpkins today and share how to do that. We may disagree on that, but we agree on this. Bakery <laughs> Lorraine has got some Halloween treats that you can get there. Also, social question, the classic scary monster movies. Who's the best? Who's the favorite? Let us know. 